Dover Athletic, a semi-professional non-league team currently sitting rock bottom of the Vanarama National League South in real life. Now this is the lowest playable league in Football Manager, where the team is predicted 24th place and favourites for relegation. But we're going to try and change that because I'm giving myself 10 seasons as manager of the club to try and take them to the Premier League. But you know that's going to be tough when our best player is a 19 year old loney goalkeeper from Bournemouth and the club has given me a grand total of £300 to work with. Either way though, we got to work and we stretched our budget to bring in Lucius Vine, a former Brentford youngster who's hopefully going to bag us a lot of goals up front. One positive though is we have a very young side, the oldest player being 33 year old captain James Dunn. And whilst the non-leagues are often known for their route one football, we're going to be trying to play a 4-3-3 gig impressing system. And with that, we were ready to go for our first season. And with our brave style of play in our first year, we were either getting beat by crazy amounts or winning by quite big margins, like when we beat Chippenham Town 4-1. And as we started to score more goals, we noticed we had a star in our midst, Zidane Sutherland. The 25-year-old striker seemingly cropped up out of nowhere with only two seasons under his belt, according to the FM game, with zero goals. But for us, he scored 24 in 41. Sutherland strikes alongside the goals of our new signing Lucius Vine were crucial in our season with 40 goals combined between the two and whilst we lost more games than we won it did lead to a surprising 12th place finish with 64 points in total. With safety secured we managed to bag some extra funds to try and improve the team and we went into season two ready to overhaul our squad. Our lonely goalkeeper left so in came experienced non-league head Craig King to take up that number one shirt and our star signing was 21 year old wide player Tyrese Briscoe. The former Millwall young Youngster showed promise last year in the National League South and we'll be hoping he can do the same for us. And there was a new striker too, Will Davies, formerly of Braintree. And whilst the team was looking light in the midfield, the forward line looked very talented and we were hoping for big things in season two. And we'd definitely done a good job because the club was now predicted to finish in 15th place, nowhere near the previous 24th place prediction of season one. So we've overhauled the squad, we've made some cash for the club as well, and we were hoping season two, we were gonna start to be able to push up the table. And push up the table, we did, because we kept winning game after game, yes, we were dropping points every now and then but overall our form was looking so much better than the previous year and those wins led us to a surprise seventh place finish a playoff position where we faced Hornchurch in the playoff first round and after the game finished 2-2 our new goalkeeper Craig King pulled out some heroics to help us win the penalty shootout that led us into an absolute goal fest of a playoff semi-final against Torquay United where we opened the scoring in the 26th minute through Zamfrey Torquay though had other ideas they went straight up the other end before the end of the first half and a big header from Jarvis made it past our new goalie and Torquay were feeling it now and in the 48th minute they got another goal again a powerful shot with no chance of saving it we weren't going to back down though and in the 50th minute Lucius Vine got down the right hand side put in across to Charles Cook who slid it across to Davies to head it in from only a couple of yards and it was that man Davies again in the 65th minute to put it past the goalkeeper to make it 3-2 to Dover a penalty for Torquay in the 70th though was slotted right down the middle to make it 3-3 and at this point I thought the game might be up and then in the 93rd minute that man again Will Davis already on two goals was waiting in the box for the cross from Sandyman and he tucked it away to make it 4-3. The playoff final awaited against Eastbourne Borough and we went all the way into extra time before we found the first goal Tyrese Briscoe putting it into the corner to put us 1-0 up. We might have been celebrating a little bit too much though because only one minute later Eastbourne Borough found themselves on the right hand side and a floated cross found Stevens at the back post and that led to a penalty shootout with Baptiste having the chance to take us all the way to the Vanarama National League and he did it. So two seasons into our 10 season rebuild and we'd already made our way into the fifth division of English football. But before we continue our journey, I just want to ask you guys if you could be absolute legends as this video did take quite a while to do. If you could just go ahead and smash that like button for me, it really does help the channel and helps the video in the YouTube algorithm. On top of that, if you haven't yet subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you could. We do weekly rebuilds on the channel. So if that interests you, hopefully hitting that subscribe
subscribe button won't be something you regret. Make sure you comment down below what rebuilds you want to see next as well. Every rebuild we do is based on your guys' comments. And the final thing is if you want to check out these save files for yourself, I'll be uploading each year of a save from season one through to 10 up onto my Patreon, which you can find linked in the description. Over there, you can support me as a creator and in return, you'll get access to these save files. But with that being said, let's see who we brought in in season three. And whilst we couldn't sign Mbappe just yet, we were able to bring in Ben Thompson in the midfield, a 29-year-old with plenty of experience. We bought in a 23-year-old centre-back whose name is Joseph Joseph. And no, I haven't just accidentally said his name twice. That is actually the man's name. Former Brighton youngster and 19-year-old Welsh forward Jaden Fuller is someone we were hoping could score us some goals. And we added 30-year-old left-sided midfielder James Brophy, who was last playing in the third division of English football. And whilst the majority of the squad was overhauled with our promotion, Tyrese Briscoe is still our star striker. After a great year last time out, we'll be hoping for the same in this season. But once again, we come in as pretty extreme underdogs. Predicted 22nd place, we're not exactly the worst team in the division, but we're nowhere near favourites to go up. But we continued our momentum from last year, winning game after game, including an FA Cup match against Notts County and a second round win against Forest Green. That led us to a third round tie against Middlesbrough, where despite only having one shot on target all game, Baptiste, hiding on the edge of the area, was able to find the back of the net to beat the big side in the third round and go on to round four. And that got us a Premier League tie against Patrick Vieira's Brighton, where early on, we really got our hopes up after Briscoe put us 1-0 up. And at this point, I thought we might really have a chance of beating a Premier League side in the FA Cup. We were pretty quickly brought back down to earth though, because in the end, Brighton won 5-2. It wasn't even close, but we had a great day out against Premier League opposition. We didn't let it get us down though, because we ended up finishing in fifth place. We managed to beat Bromley and York City in two different playoff rounds to lead us into a playoff final in our first season against Gateshead. And we got off to a flyer. In the first minute, we broke down the left-hand side. Traore played the ball across the box, and there was Briscoe to nod it in to the back of the net. Not too long afterwards though, a corner played in by Gates head made it 1-1 in only the fifth minute, but we weren't going to give up there. And in the eighth, Briscoe made it 2-1 for a very lively first 10 minutes. The game was pretty quiet though, up until the 60th minute where we found ourselves on the edge of a box and this strike from Thompson found its way into the bottom right corner. And that meant we were heading to the fourth division, League Two, in only three seasons. But that might not have been our biggest win of the year because our academy produced a 16-year-old striker by the name of Carlos Lorero and keep your eyes out for him a little bit later on. Financially, things were looking up for the club and our FA Cup run contributed to help us have £1 million in our total balance. One of the most talented players we spent that money on was Jamaican international Casey Palmer, formerly of Chelsea. Former Leicester youngster Zach Booth came in as a great midfield option. 22-year-old Charlie Sayers came in as one of our best defenders. We even began to get some good loan players coming in, with Mark Rudd of Peterborough joining as a great forward option. And whilst it was a pretty new team, Briscoe and Craig King were still key parts of our eleven. But we went into League 2, predicted as one of the biggest underdogs, 23rd place, only Fleetwood being worse than us. But if we know anything about our Dover side, it's that they're pretty comfortable with being the underdogs. And we prove that yet again by recording an amazing 5th place finish, which put us into a two-leg playoff affair against Stockport in the semi-finals. And though we were leading 3-2 in the 88th minute, they broke our hearts with this goal to take it to penalties. But we'd been in penalty shootouts in the playoffs before, and Craig King remembered everything he learned from our first one making a big save towards the end of a shootout we then put the ball in the back of the net and then it came down to the Stockport player to score to keep them in it and once again Craig King made another big save and that meant in only our fourth season our first year in League Two we were in a playoff final. Notts County were the opponents and we got off to a flyer scoring a header from a corner only two minutes in to make it 1-0. Then in the 19th Notts County went through with Estwick who brought the ball down, pulled it back across the box, and Crowley snuck it past King to make it 1-1. Now, we love a penalty shootout in a playoff, and this was to go to League One, but Abdul Salem missed his penalty, and that means we'll be stuck in the division for another year yet. Once again, a bunch of players left and a bunch came in. Ricardo Dinanga was one of our best, the left-sided Congolese forward. We had a new goalkeeping option. Stephen McMullen, the 22-year-old, was going to compete with Craig King for that number one shirt. But more excitingly, the academy graduate Lorero, who we mentioned earlier, was promoted to the first team. And he took the league by storm, scoring goal after goal after 
goal. This guy just kept finding the back of the net. A fourth place finish and a semi-final playoff win led us to the playoff final yet again and this time we weren't going to need penalties after Zach Booth smacked it into the back of the net in extra time. Larrero ended the season with 23 league goals looking like an incredible player but he wasn't alone. Under the radar signing Ronnie Gorman managed to contribute 11 goals and 12 assists. Young Frankie Maguire got 20 goal contributions in the season and he's still here still kicking in 15 starts Briscoe scored eight goals. So it was very much a team effort and as you can see we were clear of any of the teams in the playoff spots and very unlucky really to have to go up via the playoffs. We now had £150,000 to spend and in our sixth season at the club we were heading to League One with one target in mind, promotion to the championship. And we brought in some talented players to help us get there. Lewis Baker, former Chelsea wonder kid, has signed in the midfield. We've got a new left back in Zach Williams. We've got India's international goalkeeper Cameron Gregory coming in as our number one. Former West Brom youth prospect Diogo Nelson came in as our right back. And we also added Prince Will to help us get some more goals up top. Even with all those incomings though, our highest rated player was still Carlos Larrero, who at the age of 19 is already proving to be our star man. And financially, the club is in a good place with £1 million in the balance. Once again, with the odds stacked against us predicted 24th place, we had another incredible year and we managed to finish in fifth, which once again meant it was playoffs time for our team that seemed to love the playoffs. The playoff semi-finals found us put up against Charlton where the pick of the goals was this lovely passing move in a 4-2 aggregate victory to take us to the playoff final. And in the playoff final, we found ourselves against the far superior Blackburn, who put a goal against us in the 30th minute. By the 41st minute, they were through again to make it to a powerful shot past Gregory. And just as we came out raring to go in the second half, once again, Blackburn went forward and a nice move led to their third goal of the game. In the 75th, we thought the comeback might be on with this late goal that found the back of the net from Diogo Nelson, a brilliant strike into the far corner. But it wasn't to be. Blackburn got promoted despite us beating in them in the league table and that's going to mean another season in league one but it's okay we can keep building the club in this division before we go to the championship possibly a little bit too early for us and in season seven we had one of our first major sales we signed felix baker on a free a couple of years ago for the academy and we now sold him to plymouth in the championship for 400k coming in was midfielder matthew whittingham corbin the funzi was a new center back that would really boost our back line 29 year old albie morgan added some much needed experience experience to our midfield and one of Leicester's current hottest prospects in real life Will Alves has signed for us on a free having been let go and things were looking up for our Dover team now with plenty of players valued at around £500,000 or more and thankfully there's no interest in a now 20 year old Carlos Ferrero up front and as well as focusing on League One we decided it was time for a cup run and after a pretty favourable draw we ended up in the FA Cup fourth round against Walsall where an early goal from Carlos Ferrero put us 1-0 up and a free kick in the 29th minute led to this brilliant goal from Charlie Sayers, our defender, to put us 2-0 up in a game that finished 2-1. And that led us to the dream of any lower league manager facing off against a Premier League side in the FA Cup. And there's arguably no better team to be drawn against in terms of getting some money in than facing Manchester United. And despite us expecting to be battered, in the 29th minute, after a bit of a lucky free kick, Prince Will ended up knocking the ball into the back of the net to put us 1-0 up. And it took all the way until the 54th minute for Manchester United to equalise. And it was actually a little bit of a defensive mistake. We tried to play it around the back and in step Jones to make it 1-1. Most of these players, of course, we won't recognise now. And then it went to a penalty shootout. Early on, Martinez hit the ball and Gregory made a save and we started to get our hopes up that we might actually have a chance of winning this. Now we went head to head with Manchester United in penalties and were only a couple of kicks away from the goalkeepers having to take one. Now as disappointing as that defeat was, clearly it showed the boys just how good they were and from that point on, we really kicked it up a notch in the league. And a total of 74 points in the league meant that we got a second place spot and that meant after seven years, we were heading to the championship. Now with that, we had much greater pulling power and we managed to bring in some real talents like 22 year old James McIntosh 
Marsh, who has already got seven appearances for the Scottish national team. Germain Carrasco was signed as a free transfer on the right wing, and you're gonna love this. This man traded the nice pictures at the Bernabeu of Real Madrid for Dover Athletic, where he's now gonna be playing his football in the championship. Tevin Myers came straight in as one of our best defenders. And we've got an England under 21 cap goalkeeper in Justin Howard signing on a free. Maybe one of the most exciting additions though is midfielder Callum Alusi, who gives us some much needed quality in the central areas. At the age of 23, the Nigerian international looks very promising. And our main man up front, Carlos Larrero, was continuing to get better. The team was certainly looking a lot better than it used to at this point. But saying that, we're once again predicted 23rd place, given no chance of survival. But we've done this long enough. We know exactly what that's going to mean. We're going to prove everybody wrong this season. And at first, it looked like we might do exactly that. We were winning the odd game and losing the odd game. But across the next four months between September and December, we only won twice. And to be honest, I genuinely thought we were going to get relegated. But in late March, after no wins for quite a while, this great turn from Prince Will led to a 1-0 lead, which we took and finished the game with against Derby County. And from there, we really kicked on. Late season wins against Oxford, Coventry and Huddersfield were completed with this one against Burnley which meant that we got plenty of points again it was Prince Will finding the back of the net and that really did help us towards the end of the season and thankfully that meant we managed to secure survival with 60 points we finished 14th place and that meant we had a good position to build on next year. With the limited budget we did have we brought in some good players like youngster Mark Duffy, Belgian under 21 international Alexandru Savu, Nigerian centre-back Albina Sunday and Welsh defence Kevin Smith. All new gen players, but nine years in, that's pretty much all you were getting, and we've only got two years left now to make it into the Prem. But the club's balance continues to look healthier and healthier with now £3 million in the bank, and we now had 11 players at the club with a valuation of £1 million or higher. And having this higher quality of player in the team meant that we ended up having a couple of cup runs this season, including a Carabao Cup quarter-final match against Chelsea where they went 1-0 up in the third minute. In the 22nd minute though, we we showed we were no pushovers with this great goal from McIntosh on the left hand side finding the back of the net. Chelsea though in the 48th minute after probably a pretty harsh team talk decided to get back in the game with this goal from Nicholas Jackson at the back post playing it across to be tapped in. After half time though Chelsea came out flying and ended up 3-1 up but we weren't going to give in and in the 73rd minute McIntosh pulled it down for a great ball into Duffy to make it 3-2. Unfortunately we did lose and our Carabao Cup run was over but remember there was another Cup run. In the FA Cup we made it past a few rounds and ended up in the fifth round against Premier League side Southampton. Granted they were struggling with relegation but two goals including this one from Carlos Herrero helped us to a 4-3 victory and in to the quarterfinal. In the Carabao Cup quarterfinal we were drawn against Chelsea. We lost the game and then in the FA Cup final we were drawn against them once more. In the 67th minute after a tight game Petrovic had a weak clearance. McManon picked up the ball on the edge of the box and smashed it home to make it 1-0 and it looked like the unlikely victory might be on but then only a couple minutes later our star striker Carlos Lorero slipped in the box Mikhailo Mudrik their 70 million pound man won the ball back and cut it in to make it 1-1 and then in the 120th minute substitute Enzo Fernandez the 100 million pound midfielder managed to score a tap in from close range after a very lucky shot off the post from Conor Gallagher. So Chelsea got the better of us again once more in the cup but in the league we were on fire and managed to record another playoff finish. After beating West Ham 5-4 on aggregate in the semi-final we faced off against Derby who in the fourth minute scored through Juan Macias a great finish and it did mean that we trailed the game. From there we never recovered, we never really had a chance to score, we didn't score and that left us in the championship for another season. Potentially deserved though because looking at the league we finished on 74 points and Derby were way ahead of us on 82 but we've gone from having budgets of £300 now to over £4 million to spend in our 10th and last season. And whilst we did spend, we also got some players on a free too. Anthony Morrison coming in at the Irish International as a great midfield option. We spent 200k on a versatile fullback, again from Ireland by the name of Jack Wilson. Another Irishman, this time actually coming in from the Irish divisions, we sent Bohemian £500,000 for the talented Thomas Ryan. And forward option, Wilfred Taller, an under-18 international for England, signed for just over £400,000. And despite everything that we've done here in the championship so far, we're still predicted to finish 22nd, although it is now only 50 to 1, which is far better than before. And with all that done, it was time for our 10th season and our final chance of getting into the Premier League. 
And as we seem to love to do, we had another cup run in this final season, where in the fourth round we faced off against Liverpool, and to show just how far we've come, we did not back down. Early on in the 11th minute, we made it 1-0. In the 14th minute, we went forward again with Lorero putting in a brilliant ball for Duffy to make it 2-0 to our Dover side. Rodrigo Ribeiro scored a penalty for Liverpool in the 28th minute to make it 2-1, and we thought the comeback might be on, but then, Tala in the 82nd minute made it 3-1 to our Dover team, and we were actually going to beat Liverpool in a cup but no we kept on going in the 89th minute Tala once again made it into the box and a poor clearance from Xavi Veloso led to Myers at right back he played the ball in and it was Chung from up close to put it in to make it 4-1 to Dover on the day now granted that cup run did end in the next match with a loss against Liverpool but our season kept getting better and better and in the league we were currently sitting in second place with one game of the season to go now that would mean automatic promotion if we were to win in our final match but there were plenty of teams around us who were super close to us but Lorero who's been with us since the start scored a brilliant backwards header in the 38th minute to make it 1-0 and then we didn't stop in the 54th minute Carrasco found Chung who found Akusi on the edge of the area who smashed it in bear in mind he joined us when we were still in league one and that led to us getting promoted in second place in the league into the Premier League in our final season here at Dover but just to show you how close it was if we were to have lost that game and other teams have won we could have slipped down all the way into sixth in that final game. So there we go. That was our rebuild of Dover complete. 10 years from Division 7 all the way to the Premier League. I'm really hoping some of you guys will continue this over on the Patreon to see just how well this side can do in the Prem. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video, please, if you did enjoy and subscribe if you haven't already. Hope you're having a lovely new year and I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.